Hey, welcome. Glad you leaned in today is we're in week two of Explore God. And my hope is, is that you're engaging with us in a couple different ways. You've been a part of our weekend services. Uh, I love that you're leaning into devotion time. And then my hope is, is that you're connecting in community, in a life group, that you're meeting some people to hang out with, open God's word and kind of explore what this thing's all about. So way to go. Hey, as we hop into this, have you ever thought kind of how beliefs shape your life? I came across kind of some things that many people believe in. We might call them even like superstitions. As a matter of fact, as I do it, maybe kind of think in your mind, have you ever believed in any of these? Maybe something like beginner's luck. How about find a penny, pick it up, then you will have good luck. I mean, that doesn't even rhyme that well, but it's there, right? Don't walk under a ladder. That just seems like bad safety. Black cats, if they cross your path, I guess are bad luck. I, I don't think it's just black cats. I would say it's any cat. I'm allergic, so I don't like any of them. But you've heard of a Lucky's rabbit foot? I, I think it's this. It's lucky for the person that has it, but it's unlucky for the rabbit. But I mean, let me even just go through a couple other quick ones. That tra tragedies come in three. Step on a crack, break your mother's back. Don't break a mirror, knock on wood, make a wish on a wishbone, cross your fingers, don't un open an umbrella inside. I mean, that's just bad manners. Or Friday the 13th or a full moon. Uh, now, these ones are, I, I know are silly, but we sometimes buy into some other ones. Now, I've shared this before, but when I was a kid, I thought that all cows were girls and all horses were boys. I mean, think about that. Isn't that weird? I, I don't know where bulls fit into it at all, but I thought all cows are girls, which they really are. And somehow I thought if a, 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 a horse and a cow mated, if it was a boy, it would become a horse. If it was a girl, it would become a cow. Like that's really bad thinking. But let's flip it a little bit further. Um, I went through a long kind of season of my life thinking that I was unlovable. Many times thinking I was dumb, walking through life, feeling like a failure. Why? Because beliefs matter. What we believe in matters. In this last week, we started unpacking a big topic. Is there a God? And who was this person, Jesus? In fact, I wanna wrap it up by looking at what John chapter 20, verse 31 says. And the author of the book of John is going to summarize why this book was written, written why it was pulled together with other documents to talk about this person named Jesus. And this is what he says. But these are written for, like, He's telling us the why. He's telling us the for. These are written, and here's why it is, that you may believe that Jesus was the Messiah. It wasn't that just Jesus was a good guy. He was the Messiah. He's who Jews had been waiting literally for hundreds of years, believing would be their redeemer. But he doesn't just stop there. Then he adds the son of God. And then he pushes it even further. And that by believing in him, you may have life. That by believing, believing. It's not that he just lived. It's not that he just existed. It's that you believed he is the Messiah and the Son of God. That changes everything. As a matter of fact, think about it in this sense. All Christians, Muslims, Hindus, Jews, Islamics, Buddhists believe that Jesus lived and died. So just believing that he lived is not a major thing. Majority of the world believes in that. Most people would believe would say if he lived, then he died. But, but Christians hold on to one unique idea, and it's this. That he rose from the dead. And I think we would push it to say that if anyone can claim to be God, to die and raise from the dead, then that changes them from any other person. And yet I would say this, that Christians for literally hundreds of years have not just been talking about it as an idea, but have been living their lives, giving their lives, dying for the fact that Jesus was the resurrected God. It's an incredible thing. Matter of fact, I might encourage you in the days to come that you would read through the book of John and look at the life of Christ for yourself and then push it a little bit further. Maybe you would jump then on to the book of James. And I believe James is one of the greatest pieces of evidence for the resurrected Lord. See, James was the half brother of Jesus. James' mom and dad was Mary and Joseph. And if you remember, Jesus was born by an immaculate conception, right? She, there, Joseph was not the dad, and yet their half-brothers in this whole picture, right, shared the same mom. And James did not grow up believing that Jesus was the Messiah. He believed that he was something, and, and I can only imagine growing up with Jesus. And yet James would walk through his life, even to his death, proclaiming that he encountered the resurrected Jesus. It's incredible. 
I, I don't know about you if you've ever thought your brother was God. I did not. I thought my brother was the devil, but not the God, right? And yet James, James would encounter him in such a way that he would believe he is God, resurrected Lord. It's incredible. And so what's the challenge and what's the push? That if there is a God, and if it is Jesus, then what Jesus' life means and stands, what he communicated, should matter. And he desires to be in a relationship with us. And my hope is that you would take some time over the next few days and over the next couple of weeks to explore this in some greater depth. That you would continue to journey with us. Because Jesus' goal was not to just raise from the dead so that we would go, oh, wow, pretty cool. No, he did it so that we could be in relationship with him. Matter of fact, maybe you want to say a prayer right where you're at that says, Dear Lord, today I put my faith, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God. And right where you sit, I believe the Lord will meet you there. The resurrected, living God will be with you. Can I pray for us? Dear Lord, thank you that we have a belief that is not just built on ideas or, or warm thinking or luck or habits or, or any of those things. It's built on a person, a person that really lived, a person that lived a different and in a remarkable way that challenged people. His teaching, your teachings were over the top. And yet you pro kind of communicated and, and talked about the fact that you would go to the cross and die on that cross and raise from the dead. And that act changed you from anybody else, that real people encountered the resurrected Christ. And so it wasn't that you were just a good guy. It wasn't that you just did wonderful things. It's that you were God clothed in flesh among us. How incredible is that? Lord, today we put our faith in you, our belief in you, so that we can experience a life that is truly life. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Hey guys, way to go. Thanks for being with us today. I look forward to seeing you this weekend at church. God bless you. Have a great day.